Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Director of the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Consulate General of India in Durban, revered Prabhrajika Ishtaprana Mataji, Mr. Piyush Khandalwal, Mr. Sipiwe Mchuni, distinguished guests, online viewers, namaste and welcome to the ninth episode of Samarpan Yatra, a journey of devotion whereby today we will feature the story of the Sri Sharda Devi Ashram in Durban. Indeed, to commence our program, I would like to invite upon a uh, revered uh, Pravrajika Ishtaprana Mataji, who is the head of the Sri Sharda Devi Ashram, who will be uh, interacting with Mr. Sipiwe Mchunuji. Just a, a brief background about Mataji. Mataji is the president and spiritual head of the Sri Sharda Devi Ashram in Asheville, Durban. The ashram is a monastic center for women. Revered Mataji has been directing the multi spiritual, cultural, social, and welfare activities of the ashram for the past 37 years. Mataji writes articles for the ashram magazine as well as booklets. Mataji also delivers lectures, conducts the scripture classes and um, various cultural activities as well as provide spiritual and other counseling. Many devotees benefit from Mataji's wise counsel. Namaste today on this episode of Samar Panyatra, revered uh, uh, Mataji and uh, Sipiwaji. Namaste, thank you. Namaste. I would like to commence with a prayer. Welcome to Sri Sharda Devi Ashram, where we feel the loving and divine presence of our Holy Mother, Sri Sharda Devi, the Universal Mother. The blissful divine image of Sri Ramakrishna welcomes all devotees as they enter the ashram. The stairs lead to the beautiful Shiva Shrine. The Shiva Linga worshipped here is from the sacred Narmada River in Vadodara, India. Ladies wear uniform saris, which give them a sense of belonging.
the bookshop which stocks scriptures, the Ramakrishna Vivekananda literature, children's books, and a variety of articles like pictures and murtis is located at the entrance. The ashram is privileged to be able to make this literature available throughout South Africa. The daily worship of Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Sharta Devi and Swami Vivekananda creates an atmosphere of peace and tranquility. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, hundreds of families congregated for weekly prayer services. The ashram is especially busy during all Hindu festivals such as Sri Hanuman Jayanti and Ganesh Chaturthi. At these festivals, youth and children present sketches and dances glorifying the various deities. The teachings of our scriptures are enacted for the benefit of all.
Hinduism classes for youth and children have been held for over 36 years. The classes are divided into seven groups according to the ages of the children from 3 to 18 years. These classes are now held online. Each year, children are examined on the work covered and receive certificates for their achievements at a special function. They display their talents through a variety of cultural items. Many youth present talks highlighting the practical teachings of Swami Vivekananda and other saints. Youth benefit by engaging with these teachings during the preparation of the talks and feel empowered to face their challenges. During the annual children's cultural festivals, youth and children participate in sketches, dances, singing of devotional songs and chanting from the scriptures. Here, the children are chanting the Aditya Hridaya Stotram, which is in praise of the glorious sun, an expression of God's power. the teachings of Sri Sharata Devi and other saints by enacting them. They thus absorb valuable lessons which they can apply in their daily lives. <laughs> 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 
Some incidents in Mother Shartha's life are also dramatized to enable them to remember these powerful incidents. Conferences and seminars are held annually to discuss the teachings of our scriptures. Through the lives of saints and incarnations, we learn how to apply these teachings to our daily lives. The ashram's humanitarian activities bring peace and comfort to many families in need. It is only through the grace of God that funds are available to serve the community, seeing the living God in all. The ashram has recorded a variety of songs which are available on YouTube. The lyrics to these songs are available in our prayer book. The book also has a variety of prayers and hymns together with their meanings. The devotional songs are in various languages like Hindi, Tamil, Gujarati, Telugu and Bengali. Short stories of saints and incarnations are published and distributed to the public. The ashram published the Deepika annually. Due to COVID, articles are now published on social media each week. In these articles, practical lessons from interesting short stories and incidents from the lives of saints and incarnations are discussed. The ashram hosts special events to commemorate important occasions like the Silver Jubilee celebration of the ashram and the 150th birth anniversaries of Sri Sharda Devi and Swami Vivekananda. The youth are always enthusiastic to participate by presenting a variety of cultural items.
बस हो राम सियाल मानस मोरे शंकर सोन भवानी नंदन गाई गणपति जगवंदन
Ramakrishna, Sri Sharda Devi, and Swami Vivekananda. May the activities of the ashram continue for the benefit of humanity. May all live in love, peace, and unity. Jai Shri Ma. Ma. very much CCG for the great opening remarks. Uh, as you said earlier, today we have revered Prof. Rajika Istaprana Mataji. Namaskar and welcome to our ninth episode of our program Samapan Yatra. Today we will be having a great interaction with Mataji where she will uh, tell us about the devotional journey of Sri Sarada Devi Ashram in Asherville, Deben. Mataji, kindly tell us about the Sri Sarada Devi Ashram. Okay, uh, namaste and Om Namo Narayanaya to all of you. Through the infinite grace of our master Sri Ramakrishna, the Holy Mother Sri Sarada Devi and Swami Vivekananda, the Sri Sharda Devi Ashram is in existence for 37 years in this country. Although the Sri Sharda Devi Ashram is independent from the worldwide Ramakrishna Sharda Mats, we follow similar ideals. A short introduction to Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Sharda Devi and Swami Vivekananda will enable us to better understand the aims and objectives of the ashram. Sri Ramakrishna is worshipped as an incarnation of God throughout the world. We derive great inspiration and comfort from his glorious life and practical teachings. Sri Ramakrishna, the master, actually saw God and said that we too can see God if we sincerely yearn for him. We must lead a spiritual life and be truthful, then the divine power within 
is awakened. Sri Ramakrishna's intense yearning for a vision of the Divine Mother is unparalleled in the history of religion. The Master said, if you must be mad, be mad for God. The things of the world are temporary and cannot give us eternal peace. His divine message is for monks and nuns, as well as to guide householders to grow spiritually. The master's face always radiated joy, and he transformed the lives of all those who came to him. He also restored faith in God in non-believers and strengthened the foundation of religion. His unique renunciation and practical teachings remove our doubts. They deepen our faith in God and give us hope. They encourage us to face our challenges bravely. Sri Ramakrishna looked upon all women as the manifestation of the Divine Mother. He worshipped his Divine Consort, Sri Sharda Devi, as the living Goddess Durga. Thus, Sri Ramakrishna revived women empowerment. The immaculate lives of this divine couple are a great inspiration for spiritual seekers. Sri Sharda Devi, the Holy Mother, is the living example of unconditional love, compassion, and forgiveness. Her character is a rare blend of humanity and divinity. After the manifestation, after the Mahasamadhi of Sri Ramakrishna, when he became one with God, the Holy Mother was a guiding force of the Ramakrishna movement. She was a pillar of strength and gave wisdom to the monks and many disciples. Her valuable teachings like, difficulties come, but they do not last forever. You will see that they pass like water under a bridge. And the other saying is, the purpose of life is fulfilled only when one can give joy to another. These are very motivating and make life meaningful. Through her life, we see that all work done selflessly for humanity becomes worship to God. In ancient times, Monks and nuns practiced meditation and other spiritual disciplines in mountain caves or in secluded forests for their own spiritual progress. Sri Ramakrishna had 16 monastic disciples and Swami Vivekananda was their leader. The master advised his disciples to uplift humanity. He said that one who is hungry cannot practice religion. Since God is in all beings, serve them. The motto of the Ramakrishna Sharda order is Atmano Mokshartham Jagat Hitayacha, meaning renouncing the world for one's own liberation and for the upliftment of humanity. Swami Vivekananda was a spiritual giant, a world teacher, a leader, a philosopher, and the patriot saint of modern India. He worked tirelessly to awaken the faith of people in themselves and for the improvement of India. He sacrificed his life to remove the miseries of the world and to support the downtrodden and the destitute. Swamiji's brilliant personality, his message of strength and service to humanity motivated the people of India and had an irresistible appeal to the West as well. Swamiji became world renowned at the Parliament of the World's Religions held in Chicago in 1893. He spread the eternal teachings of Vedanta and India's deep spirituality to the West. Swamiji promoted peace and unity throughout the world. His mind always soared above worldly existence and dwelt on the absolute reality called God. 
his love for humanity superseded his desire for liberation and salvation. Swamiji constantly reminds us, all power is within you. You can do anything and everything. Emphasizing the need to have a good character, he said, we want that education by which character is formed, strength of mind is increased, the intellect is expanded, and by which one can stand on one's own feet. We can have a glimpse of the immeasurable power and personality of this great soul by reading about his life and teachings. Mataji, please tell us now the full history of Sri Sarada Devi Ashram. Sri Swami Nishchala Nandaji Maharaj was the founder and first president of the Ramakrishna Center of South Africa, which was founded in 1942 in Durban. He was inspired by Swami Vivekananda's message of renunciation and service. Swami Nishchanananda, born in South Africa, began to spread the message of Sri Ramakrishna in this country from the age of 17. He went to India to become a monk. He pioneered the course of Vedanta in South Africa through prayer services, lectures, retreats, and seminars. Revered Swamiji initiated several humanitarian activities to serve the less fortunate. He purchased the property to build an ashram in Ashivo. Sri Swami Shivapadanandaji Maharaj, the second president of the center, expanded the work. He constructed the Sri Sharda Devi Ashram, which was officially opened in 1984 but as the Ashival branch of the Ramakrishna Center. In keeping with the vision of Swami Vivekananda's wish to have an independent monastic order for women, Sri Swami Shivapadanandaji established this ashram as a monastic center for women in 1985. The Sri Sharda Devi Ashram, which is situated in the heart of the busy city of Durban, serves as an oasis of spirituality. Once within its loving precincts, the Holy Mother's overwhelming spirit and enchanting grace is palpable. The ashram is a haven of peace and serenity to all. Revered Pravrajika Atma Prana Mataji was the first president of this ashram. Mataji had dedicated her life to prayer and service to humanity. Danyavat Mataji for the full history of Sri Sarada Devi Ashram. Now, what I want to know, Mataji, what type of activities are you conducting regularly at Sri Sarada Devi Ashram? The activities of the ashram are enormous. Innumerable spiritual and cultural programs are held to encourage people to live productive lives. The humanitarian outreach programs bring peace and comfort to many less fortunate families, especially women and children. Meditation and offering of worship are important aspects of the daily program. The midday satsang includes chanting from the scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita and Devi Mahatmyam and reading from the Ramakrishna Vivekananda literature. Prayer services are held every Sunday and it is a wonderful sight to see families coming together to pray. Congregational singing of devotional songs in various languages like Hindi, Tamil, Gujarati, Telugu, Bengali, and English attracts a large crowd of devotees who attend regularly. Many hymns are also chanted in Sanskrit. Verses from the Bhagavad Gita are chanted and explained before the satsang commences. 
we read and discuss the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna during satsang, and members and youth give talks on Vedanta, the lives and teachings of Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Sharda Devi, and Swami Vivekananda, as also the other direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. Devotees often say, attending satsang is like charging our battery so we can face the world knowing that God is with us. Once a fortnight, we chant the Sri Ram Nam Sankirtanam during Ekadashi. Special prayer services, pujas and havans are conducted to celebrate all the Hindu religious festivals, which are almost every month. The festivals include the birthday celebrations of Sri Ramakrishna, Mother Sharda and Swamiji. The 1st of January every year is celebrated as a holy day in the Ramakrishna Sharda order as Sri Ramakrishna had blessed many householder devotees with the vision of God on this day. The new year is welcomed with singing of devotional songs and chanting from mantras. A night long vigil is observed during Mahashivaratri. Sri Ram Nomi is celebrated over nine days and Sri Krishna Astami over eight days, culminating with the birth of Lord Krishna at midnight. Navaratri is celebrated over 10 days, concluding with Vijaya Dashami. Sri Hanuman Jayanti, Guru Purnima, Ganesh Chaturthi, Diwali, and Gita Jayanti are also observed. During many of these celebrations, which are attended by over 600 devotees, our youth present cultural items like sketches and dances. The spiritual ambience in the shrine, created by chanting from the scriptures and singing God's holy name, fills us with peace and inner strength to overcome challenges. These sacred occasions remind us that the purpose of life is to know God or know who we really are. We are divine by nature. We are not the body, mind or the intellect because these change constantly. We are the eternal, unchangeable Atman or the soul, which is the power of God in us. Prayer helps to awaken this divine power. Swami Vivekananda says, each soul is potentially divine. The purpose of religion is to manifest this divinity through devotion, meditation, study of scriptures together with introspection and selfless service. Many classes are held regularly, and these include the study of the Bhagavad Gita, the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, and the Ramayana. Then we learn from the chanting of the Devi Mahatmyam, worship to Sri Ramakrishna, and the offering of the Havan. Singing classes are held to motivate youth and children to sing God's sweet names. Children sing very well. The classes enhance their confidence and inspire them to sing, thus increasing their devotion to God. The ashram conducts special women's programs during International Women's Day in March and the South African Women's Day in August. These programs support women who gain inner confidence, feel empowered, and enjoy peace of mind. Spiritual retreats are conducted for families to inspire them to pray regularly and to live in harmony and peace. Value-based education on Hinduism for children and youth are conducted every Sunday during the school terms. Using stories from our scriptures, youth and children are taught moral values. They also learn verses from the Bhagavad Gita and other prayers together with their meanings. A structured course on Hinduism using various texts 
from the scriptures and the Ramakrishna Vivekananda literature is followed for the different grades, almost seven different levels in the Hinduism classes. The classes highlight the importance of prayer, meditation, and chanting from the scriptures, stimulate and develop youth potential, character and personality development, promoting family values, and empowering youth to think positively, take correct decisions, and not to be involved in substance abuse. Examinations are held annually, and the youth and children love to participate and excel. Many that have completed these exams over the years feel confident and are grateful to acquire this invaluable knowledge, which enables them to cope with life's challenges and reminds them that God is within them. Youth Day programs are conducted by the youth. They present the talks and actively participate in discussions to promote character building as taught by Swami Vivekananda. Youth are the future leaders of our country, and it is important that they learn good values and morals. We have a Vedanta bookshop which stocks many scriptures, the Ramakrishna Vivekananda literature, children's books, CDs, and other articles. The typing and layout of our printed material is done at the ashram. Some of our major publications are the prayer book, which is very popular, hymns from Sri Sri Chandi, that is the important hymns from the Devi Mahatmya, short lives of Sri Ramakrishna and Sri Sharda Devi, the Deepika, which is a colorful magazine to encourage youth and adults to read about our religion. The Hanuman booklet, calendars, pamphlets on important festivals, and about our humanitarian programs. Then we have media. During important celebrations, talks are presented on Lotus FM's Bhakti Sangeet and on Hindvan. Using Swami Vivekananda's dictum, service to man is worship of God, the ashram conducts various humanitarian outreach programs. Every week, fruits, vegetables, and bread are distributed to the needy. During winter, we distribute blankets and warm clothing, school uniforms, stationeries, and other essentials are distributed to learners from our nearby schools. Grocery hampers are distributed every month to indigent families in the greater Durban area. Some of these areas include Asheville, Reservoir Hills, Riverside, Mirbank, Chatsworth, Welbidat, Amzinto, and Tongat. We also support the local schools, women's homes, and senior citizens association. Prior to the lockdown last year, many families that received hampers attended the satsangs on Sundays. Prayer services empower them to manage their challenges. Their faith in God deepens and they gain inner strength. Dhanyabad Mataji, I am deeply touched and now I fully understand that the Sri Sarada Devi Ashram, you know, it is right there in the communities and helping, you know, so all the great work that uh, Sri Sarada Devi Ashram is doing, it will never go unnoticed, you know, God will bless the ashram for doing all the great work in the communities. What Thank I you. want to know, uh, uh, Mataji, what are the challenges that you are facing for the expansion of this work? Well, due to COVID-19, the ashram has suspended all public gatherings since the lockdown in March 2020. Fortunately, 
all of the ashram's spiritual programs are currently virtual. There are weekly satsangs, the youth day programs, women's day programs, children's education classes, the executive and board of management meetings are all held online. Every Sunday morning, our devotees participate in the weekly satsang from the safety and comfort of their homes. It is remarkable to note that families are praying regularly together through this online platform. Many families are now living in other provinces or countries, and they are also joining the prayer services, making the physical distances that, was, that once separated us seem non-existent. It is very encouraging to note the online participation of devotees during these difficult times. Devotees actively participate in our seminars and appreciate the interactive programs. The numbers have in fact increased as more people are looking for comfort, hope and solace. However, the one challenge is the high cost of data. This prevents more participants from benefiting. Despite the challenges of COVID-19, the ashram has continued with its spiritual, educational, and humanitarian outreach programs regularly. The humanitarian programs are very relevant now, and we have a group of dedicated devotees who source, pack, and distribute the food, hampers, and detergents under strict COVID regulations. By working in a spirit of selfless service, they serve the living God in the needy. The need for counseling and encouragement has also increased as individuals are afflicted by the virus. Many have lost their jobs and some have lost their near and dear ones. Our problems, other problems faced by individuals include loneliness, anxiety, depression, and socioeconomic challenges. They find consolation and great strength through prayer and words of encouragement. Tanya Mataji, since now uh, there is a sense in me that uh, Sri Sarada Devi Ashram you know, is busy at work, what I want to know from you, Mataji, what type of participation and response that you are getting in these activities? Through the grace of Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Sharda Devi and Swami Vivekananda, our activities have been increasing despite the challenges that the country is facing. The Sri Sharda Devi Ashram reaches out to many disadvantaged people. The activities from spiritual, educational, upliftment of individuals to humanitarian outreach programs are all on the increase and serve many people. Faith-based organizations like the Sri Sharda Devi Ashram support humankind. The help proffered to hundreds of needy families encourage and empower them to be progressive. The Vedanta philosophy is eternal. Its message and teachings are very relevant, especially today. Swami Vivekananda's powerful teachings also are very practical, stimulating, and much needed today. Just as Sri Krishna awakened the divine power in Arjuna by asking him not to flee from the battlefield of life, Swami Vivekananda encourages us by his sayings such as, wake up, O lions, and shake off the delusion that you are sheep. Infinite power is within you. Strength is life. Weakness is death. Arise, awake, and stop not till the goal is reached. The power of regular prayer is amazing. Sri Ramakrishna advises us, Pray to God every morning and evening. Have you not seen how a boy holds onto a pillar 
and swings around it with great speed without fear of falling? Similarly, we must hold on to God with intense faith and do all our duties, then there will be no danger of falling. Sri Sharda Devi consoles us, especially those who are unhappy. Mother assures us that her eternal love and compassion are always there for humanity. She says, never fear. Whenever you are in distress, just say to yourself, I have a mother. There is no doubt that God does his own work. We are blessed to serve him through our many activities to bring peace and joy to many. May Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Sharda Devi and Swami Vivekananda continue to bless us with knowledge of and devotion to God. Hari Om Tatsat. Thank you very much, Mataji. There is this quote from Mahatma Gandhi that says, uh, hands that serves are better than the lips uh, that uh, praise. So in me now, you know, I really, I am fully understanding that uh, Sri Sarada Devi Ashram is really serving the community. It's saving the women, it's saving the youth. When I'm listening to you, Mataji, you know, there is a sense in me that uh, Sri Saradevi Ashram is operating or is running like a well oil machine because everybody is hands on and you are uplifting everybody. Youth are there, I listen nicely. All age, you know, you're taking care of them. Women, you know, everybody is just, you know, you are just uh, operating, you know, in such an amazing way. So thank you very much, Mataji. So what are the prospects of Sri Sarada Devi Ashram? I think our prospects are really great. And despite all challenges, because we have a good congregation, we have many initiated members that uh, really revere Sri Ramakrishna. They adore Mother Sharda. They love Swami Vivekananda. So they have a sense of belonging to this ashram. They feel this is their spiritual home. So they are prepared to lay down their lives for this organization in the sense that they will do anything to help the organization, to help people. They love the idea that we are not praying only for ourselves. We are not only sitting and praying all day or meditating, but we are working with the people. We are helping them to go forward. And so they support us with great joy. We know that, as I have said earlier, only God does his own work. We are blessed to be his instruments. We are very, very blessed that God has allowed us to be here and to serve him through the many activities and God himself brings devotees to his feet. So we can only thank God for allowing us to worship him. Thank you. We are about to close now our program. So we'll just say, Mataji, is there anything that you'd like to say to all the viewers who are listening to you today? You know, because I am really, really touched by everything that you have said. You know, God will bless you. God will bless those who support the vision of Sri Sarada Devi Ashram. Because without their support, we understand that you will not be doing all these things that you are doing to the communities. So is there anything, Mataji, that you'd like to say to all our viewers at home? Thank you for this opportunity. Yes, definitely, because today, a lot of people are suffering in different kinds of ways. As we said, some have lost their jobs, some have lost their near and dear ones, some are lonely. There's some sort of sadness in so many people. Very few are enjoying peace, joy, love, and happiness. All I want to say is remember that God is right in your heart. God does not leave us. Sri Ramakrishna says, that when a child holds the father's hand, the child can leave the hand and may fall. 
But when the father holds the hand or the mother holds your hand, she will never let you go. So have this confidence that God, in whichever way you worship God, we, may, we in Hinduism also refer to God as father and mother, as our best friend, as our eternal companion. So God will never leave us. Have that faith that you are not alone. If you need help, whatever we can do to support you, we will definitely do. And if we cannot, we will refer you to those who can help you. Don't think that the world has come to an end for you and nobody can support you, nobody can help you. Your joy is there, peace is there. Go out and reach it. And as the saying goes, do not turn your back from the sun and say it is so dark. Look at the bright, beautiful sun. Look at the beautiful blue sky and know that life has a meaning. Life can be progressive and productive provided we try to awaken that divinity in our hearts. Thank you so much. Mataji, you said it all, you know, so we really appreciate uh, whatever you said this evening and it will found a place, I promise you, in our hearts, you know, because uh, whatever you're doing, you're not doing to a particular people, you're only doing to the human race, you know, because all of us, we fully understand that we belong to the human race. So if you help the fellow human race, God will rejoice. So on that note, Mother G, we really appreciate you uh, who accepted our invitation this evening. So in that note, I'd like to say to you, Namaskar, ma'am. Till we meet again, God will give you a strength, you know, to do more in the communities and the role that you are playing in the communities as the mother figure. So we are really touched and God will bless you. On that note, I'm going back to my colleague, Sristi G, for the closing remarks. Tanyavad, Tanyavad, and also thank you very much. Indeed, uh, thank you so much, uh, revered uh, uh, Rajika, uh, Ishta Prana Masaji, and Sukhiva Ji uh, for that very interesting, knowledgeable interaction, as well as for taking us uh, through that uh, divine journey of the Sri Sharda uh, Devi Ashram in uh, Durban. For that, we've come to the conclusion of today's episode of Samar Panyata. Mm -hmm. I would uh, like to uh, extend deep gratitude to Revere Pravrajika Ishtaprana Mataji for taking time off your busy schedule and sharing this journey with us, as well as to all the members of the Sri Shadda Devi Ashram in Durban, uh, Director of the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Consul General of India in Durban, Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Mr. Sapiwe M. Chunu, Mr. Piyush Kandelwal, most importantly, you, our online guests and viewers, please stay tuned to social media pages of SBCC to see what's happening next. Namaskar.